What we're showing here today is a joystick control for a Blackmagic video hub. It can be used for any size video hub because it's all programmable within the operation of the unit itself. The box consists of a microcontroller being Arduino Uno, which is the smallest version of the Arduino range. The software is written to fit into the memory capacity of the microcontroller. The unit interface is using any standard Ethernet, as would any video hub controlling computer on the network. This joystick switcher can control as many inputs as video hub has. It automatically senses how many inputs there are on the connected video hub. It limits your control to that and it controls up to 16 buttons. This software gives you control over the IP address of the server computer, which is controlling the video hub via the USB port as per normal configuration. It also allows the ability to set the IP address of the microcontroller. It allows each of the 16 buttons to control its input. So when you press it, what input it will select. It'll allow each button to be programmed for what output it is controlling. It also has the ability to have each button programmed for a default input. It also allows each button to be used as a toggle or a latch. The toggle is where you hold your finger on the button and the source is selected until you take your finger off the button and then it reverts back to the default. And in the latch mode, you just have to hit the button once and the input is selected and stays selected until you hit another button. It has on-screen help using the question mark. It has the ability to be able to see the current configuration. And in the help mode, it'll show you what the current IP address is for both the local and the video hub. Once the unit is set up via the terminal program, and in this case on a Mac, we're using MacWise, and on a PC, uh, you can use PuTTY or any form of terminal. The control is via a USB, and once all the initial settings are made, there is no need to continue with the USB connection as it'll operate as a standalone. All the configurations are stored in EEPROM, so it will remember all the settings between power cycles. And as you can see, it's a very small unit which you can just tuck under the panel somewhere. It can be powered using the USB port, a 12 volt plug pack, or an optional PoE or power over Ethernet. You can either write your own software to do similar to what I'm doing here, or for a couple hundred dollars you can contact me and I can send you the software and you can upload it with all the instructions. The operation, as I've said, is fully configurable, and in most instances I would see it being used as a four joystick, four position operation, where you'd have four people controlling four cameras each and all the control will be through the one microcontroller and just going to the single Ethernet connection. The video hub will operate in its normal mode with any other connections, be it computer or control panels or anything, and controls it like another control panel. The video hub I'm connected to here at the moment is a 12 by 24, one of the older versions of the video hub, but it works just as well on any video hub. Ideally suited for a 16 input video hub if you're going to use the 4x4 operation. So in this demonstration, you will see that I'm only controlling 12 sources, as that's all the sources this video hub has, and up to 24 destinations. As you can see here on the screen, I have a Mac that's just displaying the control panel for the video hub, as it's also connected to the Ethernet. Just up here in the top corner here, I've just got a four-way split that's showing four separate video hub outputs. And then up here is a terminal window on the Mac, which can also be on a PC, which is just used to initially set up the joystick switcher. In this example, I've just built a box that's got 12 buttons, and these emulate the joystick buttons. Each one of these buttons represents a joystick push down function, but I've just got them wired, so you just push a button and it will change the source. In this current example, I have the first four buttons set up as position number one, which goes to the first destination, the second four buttons go to the second destination and the third four buttons go to the third destination. But these are all totally programmed and you can have any button go to any destination. I've also got the buttons programmed as toggles, not latches, and all the programming is done through the terminal. Once the initial programming of the box has been set up, it can be unplugged from the terminal and only needs to be reconnected when the functionality of the joysticks has changed. Each one of these buttons represents a single joystick and they are based on contact closure. All the buttons have a common ground and an individual wire coming out going into the microcontroller. 
When the unit is first turned on, it just displays the current IP addresses that it's connected to. If the item has the echo selected, which is part of the setup procedure, when it turns on, it'll actually show you a display of all the parameters from the connected video hub. And with those parameters, you can then scroll back on the terminal program and it shows you everything that the video hub has sent, which is used to configure the microcontroller. This information can be either selected to display all the time, you don't need to have it sending out the information, so you can just turn it off. To obtain help when you're setting up the unit, you just hit the question mark button on the keyboard and hit enter. It shows you all the keystrokes that you can press to change the programming. Now when you press the C key and hit enter, it shows you the current configuration of the unit. Now in this example here, you can see there's only 12 buttons as I mentioned earlier, and this has been set up to control three different destinations. And in this case, it's destination 16, 17, and 18. They represent three different CCU positions where you would have four cameras per CCU position with a total of 12 cameras. And as mentioned earlier, you can go up to 16. So the left-hand column indicates the button. The second column indicates the destination. The third column indicates the source. And the fourth column indicates the default source when no buttons are pushed down. The fifth column is indicating whether it's a toggle or a latch function. In a normal situation, you would probably have 12 cameras in this case connected to inputs 1 to 12. So the basic operation of the unit is designed so many people are sitting down pressing many push buttons on their joystick to preview cameras for doing CCU matching, etc. So if I hit button number one, if you have a look at quad split up here, you'll see that when I hit the button and hold it down, it'll show the source that's been programmed for that particular input. If I take my finger off the button, it goes back to the default input, which I had programmed. With button two, it'll go to a button two source. and it's in latch mode, so it'll return to the default source. Same with button number three and button number four. So those four buttons have been programmed for quad number two up there. The second lot of four buttons, again, it's in latch mode. You take your finger off the button, it reverts to the default input, which is the second group's number two button. number three button and button number eight which is the second group's number four button and then of course we go over to quad number four and it's the same again and as you can see they're all in toggle mode which would be the normal operation if you hold your finger down we're going to go and have a look at quad number three there which would be the second ccu position here i am holding the button down and lifting it off now if i actually with another hand, hold that button down and press another button, it'll switch to that button. So I can actually hold one button down and you can switch if you need to match to a specific camera. So any button you, you hold down, if you hold the second button down, it will switch to that button and when you take your finger off it'll go back to the other button that you're holding down. And of course you can have all four buttons held down and it'll just go back to the last button selected. And of course if you have no buttons down, it'll show you the default source. You can also have in these three groups, as I've programmed here, multiple clicks at any time. So there's no demand on the system if any one button is being pushed. Any button will be pushed and it'll only switch to the particular output that it's been set to. The first thing that you would need to do when you set this unit up is to set up the video hub IP address. If you see the very first help item is IP and a capital V. And if you type in IP, capital V, and then press the equals key, and then type in an IP address, and in this case I'm going to type in 192.168.2.123, say, as an example. And if you hit enter, it comes up and shows you that it's received a new IP address and it then resets the hub so it can obtain the information for the video hub you just connected. Now in doing so it didn't find the video hub there so it says that it's failed in connection so we're going to go back and reprogram it to the video hub that was connected by typing IP capital V equals 192.168.2.123 
8.2.102. I hit enter and again it'll reset itself. Get the new information from the different video hub, notices that it's connected and displays the new IP address. If we had echo turned on, which I'll hit E, enter, when you set the new IP address, it'll also display the current status of the video hub itself. I can show that by just typing in the same IP address and it'll do a reset regardless. Or you can type in capital R, enter, which will reset the unit. So to change any of the parameters of any of the buttons, you just follow the instructions using the question mark key. And as shown before, you can change the button's destination source by using the button number, then the equals, the destination. In this case, we're using destination 16. We want to change the source to say 8. So you go comma then 8, enter. It would now show that the source is number 8. So when we hit button number 1, it's selecting source 8, but as soon as you take your finger off, it reverts back to the default input. So we can go back and change that again. Let's hit the C so you can see what the configuration is now. And again, we're going to go button number 1 equals destination 16, but we want the input to go back to what it was, which was number 1. So comma 1. And there it is now. So then when we hit button number one, you see it selects number one. You also may have noticed any computer when it's looking at the video hub will actually reflect whatever the source is that you're pushing. So as you can see, I'm pushing these buttons. It's actually displaying those sources. So everything's transparent. So we go to the next button. You'll see that's quad three and so on. Another feature I wanted to show you here is the use of the latch and toggle function. Again, if we type in C and enter, that's our current configuration, and you'll see that the last item, the T, means they're all on toggle. So I'm just going to change input number one equals L for latch, and you'll see it now says toggle is off, or no toggle. So now that button number one has been selected to no toggle, You'll see that when I press button number one and take my finger off, it selects its input, but it stays selected. It doesn't toggle back to the default input. But if I select button number two, you'll see that it still toggles. Button number three still toggles. Button number four still toggles. But button number one is latching. And if I hit button number one over and over again, it's not going to do anything because it's already latched on. Now if I go and change the toggle on button number 2, I'll type in 2 equals capital L for latch, enter. The status is now updated. And again, if I press button number 2, the selection remains. Button number 1 is also latched. So as you can see, hit the button once and it stays there. We'll go now to button number 3. You'll see it's still on toggle. Button number 4 is still on toggle. So we'll go and change both of those. So we're going to type in 3 equals latch, and then 4 equals latch, and then now you'll see all four buttons are now on latch. So as we select each button, you'll see that they're now latching. Now this hasn't affected any of the other buttons that are programmed for other destinations. But these four buttons here are now programmed to be latches. So to program the buttons back to latches, you just type in the button number. Button number one equals T for toggle, enter. And there you see the status has been updated. So I'm going to do all of them. And there you can see all of them are back to being toggles. Again, you can see the status is changing on the computer. Now you got to remember this can be any computer connected anywhere. Now we also have a degree of error checking when you're typing in information. If you try and type in numbers that aren't compatible with the current configuration, say type in destination being 32, 
this has only got 24 destinations and then type in input 1 you'll see it comes up and says the destination is out of range and again if I type in a source that's incorrect destination is legal but source A is input 78 it'll show that the source is out of range